When people ask what the best beginner tree frog species is to take care of, I 10 times out of 10 say the gray tree frog. These guys are really hardy, they're easy to find, most often they're just collected from the outdoors, but you can find captive bred ones occasionally, and they are cute, they're great eaters, males will call at night, which is pretty sweet, and they are just all around an amazing pet frog. So today we are going to show you how to take care of the gray tree frog. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Exoterra for sponsoring today's video. They have a great new line of amphibian supplies called Frogs & Co, and they are excellent for caring for frogs. So we're going to use a lot of their products today in this video. And I'd also like to introduce our stars of the video. To your left, this big girl. This one is a female that we actually found just outside of our facility, and we needed, we had a lone male gray tree frog in the zoo, and he was calling and calling and calling for a girlfriend. And I'm not huge on taking wild caught animals, of course, but we needed a second gray tree frog for the zoo, and we were having uh, a dickens of a time trying to, to get one, so I did take her in. She's been a joy to have, and the one over here, this is Sponge. She was actually surrendered to our adoption program, and we decided to hang on to her and just have three gray tree frogs in the zoo. And she's getting these beautiful green colors in her skin. She's turning out to be a really pretty gray tree frog. So uh, both of these live in our zoo. We're gonna be using them in our example, or as our examples today, but you'll be able to see them in the zoo when you come and visit. Now I know for a fact these two are going to keep jumping everywhere as we film, unless we put them back right away. So since we have an entire uh, habitat to set up, we're going to just put them in this little travel bin here and put them in the enclosure when it's all done and ready for them. The first thing you're going to need, of course, is an enclosure for your tree frogs. And the minimum size for a single gray tree frog is 12 by 12 by 18 inches high. You could, if you want, of course, you can get them something bigger for a single frog, or if you want to have multiple gray tree frogs, you're definitely going to need something bigger. So today, we are going to use what I'd recommend anyway, an 18 by 18 by 24 inch enclosure. Now you could use an equivalent sized uh, tank, like glass tank that you go in from above, but it is so much easier to have a front opening enclosure because because you can just reach right in from the front. You don't have to move any lights or any other supplies out of the way to get in through the top. And you look like less of a predator to your animals too. If you reach in from above, like you would in say a 10 gallon tank with a screen lid, that's going to be pretty intimidating to frogs because they think you're say like a hawk reaching down to pick them up. Whereas if you reach in from the side, it's a lot less threatening to them. We also recommend a front opening enclosure because it helps avoid condensation on the glass. Exoterra enclosures, for example, have a ventilation bar right here, which creates kind of a chimney effect through the enclosure, and that extra ventilation prevents condensation buildup on the glass, so it makes your animals a lot easier to view. When it comes to setting up the inside of your enclosure, you can admittedly just do a substrate layer, some decorations, a water dish, and some fake plants, and that would work. Your frog would live just fine, but it's going to be much happier, and you're going to get much more out of doing a bioactive enclosure. And I know to a lot of people watching that sounds intimidating, a bioactive habitat, but it's really not that bad at all, and if you set up a bioactive enclosure, you get to see plants grow, and you can see isopods and critters moving in a bioactive soil, and you're essentially creating your own little ecosystem in your home. So we're going to show you how to set up what we recommend for gray tree frogs, which is a bioactive setup. Today we are going to use Exoterra's new tree frog terrarium, which has quite a few adaptations, I suppose, for tree frog happiness. First, what I'm just going to do right off the bat is flip around the packaging, because on the back side of it is a background. So you can just use that to make it look a little bit more natural too. At the bottom of the enclosure, there is a hole drilled in the glass and that's used for drainage. We're going to get into that more in a little bit. The door you'll notice is in one, one big piece as opposed to two little doors that all the other Exoterra styles have. And that's to allow greater visibility of your frogs in this little environment that you're creating. There is a lid that instead of having an entirely screen lid, it's actually half screen, half plastic with a little bit of a window for light if you want to add some on there and this helps hold in humidity in the enclosure since tree frogs need quite high humidity levels. Uh, to open this up there's a little flap you push down on it, it becomes a handle and then you can lift it up so it's actually really slick and if you need to take the whole thing off you just lift it off like that. So it's actually really really cool. Also one more thing I'm going to point out are these little tabs. These are what hold your nozzles for your misting system if you want to use it and I'm going to get more into that later too. A lot of cool uh, features about this enclosure that are just for tree frogs which is why we wanted to use this for our gray tree frog care video. All right, first we're gonna set up the drainage 
addition, add-on. Drainage tubing. Tubing. There we go. First, we're going to add the drainage tubing. I couldn't remember what it was called at first. So anyway, we have a strainer right here, and this is going to fit in that hole over there. We'll show you in a second. We're going to put the tube in this guy, and this is just an elbow joint, essentially, to prevent the hose from uh, kinking when you're draining it, and then they're therefore blocking off water flow. So this way, the whole hose stays open because it goes through there instead of kinking the hose. All right, and the end of the hose gets attached to this valve. Do you like how they use like every different type of way of securing a hose to a different piece of plastic? Yeah, I know. You get to learn all the different connections. Yeah. First, we're going to line up the base of the bulkhead underneath the hole. And this is on the outside. This hand is on underneath the tank. Then we're going to put in the top of the bulkhead. Hooray! Hooray! There we go. Nice and snug fit. So now when you want to drain water out of this enclosure, since there's going to be a bunch of dirt and stuff on top of it, you're not going to be able to access it yourself. So that drain right there will allow the water to just drain through. And if you just drain it down into a bucket, you can open up the valve and all the water will come out. As many of you already know, the first layer in a bioactive enclosure is the drainage layer. And for that, Exoterra sent us BioDrain. The first thing we have to do though is rinse this off. So we'll go do that quick. Ta-da, it's now rinsed, rinse dish. Drainage layer you want to be like an inch and a half thick. So we're gonna need a second bag for sure. Drainage layer, check. Now that we've evened it out, the drainage layer acts as a water source for the roots of plants to tap into. And once they reach into it, your uh, your plants will really start thriving. So this also provides an area for beneficial bacteria to form. And that bacteria will help reduce nitrates in the water and basically just waste products. So this is an essential part for the ecosystem that you're building for your frogs. On top of the drainage layer, we're gonna put either a screen or a mesh. Uh, the Exoterra brand is a little bit different. It's not like a screen door screen at all. This is actually a nice mesh. Kind of cool. They put the brand on that. I yep. think that's kind of neat. And essentially what this does is it protects the drainage layer from getting a bunch of dirt mixed into it because you want this layer to be just rocks and water and nothing else. The mesh here, or the bio drain, does come in different sizes from Exoterra. This one is just the 18 by 18 inch one, which fits perfectly in this enclosure and there's no trimming needed. But if you accidentally got too big of one, say, you can trim this down to the size that you need. The next layer that sits on top of this mesh is the substrate layer. And this is a very important one. And we're actually gonna have to move all of this aside so we can make it ourselves. Usually for the substrate layer, we would use Snake Discovery Awesome Mix because how can you beat that? But today Exoterra sent us some ingredients to make a new substrate layer that we're gonna try today and see what we think. It'll consist of three different Exoterra products. Rainforest substrate, which is mostly bark with some moss mixed in. This will help aerate the soil, add some volume to it, and absorb a little bit of moisture. Substratum, and this is a new Exoterra product. It's actually a natural product that is collected near a volcano in Japan. It's already full of beneficial bacteria, so this is awesome for root growth and for plant growth in general. And finally, the forest floor bedding, specifically specifically today, the equatorial forest floor. And this, we're not gonna mix the leaves into this substrate layer. We're gonna sprinkle those on top. What we're gonna add to the substrate layer is actually this. This is coconut husk, fi very finely ground up. And this is essentially gonna act as the glue to hold everything together and hold in a ton of moisture too. And thanks to the power of editing, it's mixed. It's a little bit on the drier side, straight out of the bag though. So we're gonna add some water to it. Some dechlorinated water, of course. Yay, I get to be a kid again and play with the dirt. Pretty sure that's why bioactive enclosures have gotten so popular, want to play in the dirt. Pretty much. That looks awesome, actually. It does look pretty good. Honest truth here, I've never mixed these up before. They really do look like a good substrate layer. Like, I feel like this is gonna hold in moisture really well. It's interesting to see a different take on the substrate layer, but I could definitely see this working. I feel like it's a good consistency, it's a good texture. I feel like roots could grow through it really easily. And it's also going to hold on to that moisture and slowly release it over time. I think though, we might break into this bag that Ed's opening up and making a lot of noise with. Not all of them! I didn't mean for all of them to go in. I was looking for like maybe a handful. There. We think we might add some of these leaves, we'll crumple them up because we're planning on adding some isopods and springtails and this will give them a little bit of a food source to start out with. Go. Leaves have been added. So now we're gonna put this in the enclosure as our substrate layer. Ta-da! And before we move on, 
I think I might wash my hand. You should go touch the mural. Uh, no, I'm not going to touch the mural. <laughs> sure. We'll have plenty of kids with messy hands touching the mural as it is. He put a protective layer on it, so you're good. No. <laughs> Next, we're going to add some structures, some fun things for the frogs to climb on and jump off from. Today, we're going to use a bunch of cork bark, I think, but you can use driftwood and other fun, naturally things, some big branches. If you find them outside, you could use those as long as they come from a pesticide and otherwise chemical-free area, and if you sanitize them at home first. All right, so I think I've utilized as much vertical space as I can with the cork bark, but now I also want to save some room for plants. So we're going to add some pothos. And I like using pothos because it's a very hardy species. It grows really well, especially with frogs. And it has nice broad leaves that are big enough that and, and strong enough to support the weight of a tree frog. We're also going to include some wandering dude. And this stuff kind of just wanders and creeps through the enclosure and grows a little bit on the uh, structures too. Kind of a, a pretty plant plant that's reptile and amphibian safe that we're also going to incorporate. So now we just have to figure out where to plant them. All right, so as you can see, I tried to fill as much space as I could. Now these plants are going to grow and fill up the rest of the void, and the frogs enjoy things that are very sturdy to climb on and jump off from. They're gonna sit on the glass a lot of the time too, but they like to climb up and down, and they're gonna use these leaves as well, so they'll kind of grow into it as the plants grow too. And lastly, just for fun, we're gonna add a little coconut hide, because the frogs can sit on top of that. This is a good one for like Pac-Man frogs too, but the tree frogs will use it. And for or water, since you want a nice water dish as well, we're going to put this little water feature or water dish in the front. For water dishes for frogs, I recommend something that's deeper rather than shallow. If you do a pretty shallow tray, it's just going to dry out pretty quickly, or the frogs are going to jump in it, jump out, and they're not really just going to soak in it and spend time in it. So this is a nice deep one that I think they're really going to enjoy. And of course, when it comes to their water, only use dechlorinated water. All right, now we're going to use the rest of the leaf litter that came in that package. And this we're just going to sprinkle over any exposed soil and this will provide a hiding spot for isopods and it'll help hold in the moisture underneath. All right, now that we have the leaf litter in, we're going to add some water into the drainage layer and ideally you want that drainage layer about halfway full of dechlorinated water. Now it's going to take a little while for the roots of the plants to make their way down there, but that water will also help encourage the growth of beneficial bacteria in the drainage layer and you at all times want to keep it at about halfway full. Now that we've shown you how to set up the enclosure or the inside of an enclosure for gray tree frogs, let's talk about humidity. Gray tree frogs actually like pretty high humidity levels, so you can either hand mist them twice a day, or if you don't want to hand mist them or you think you might forget, then we recommend setting up a misting system for them. So today we're going to set up or use the Exoterra Monsoon, and this is a misting system that's really easy to program so that you don't even have to worry about misting your frogs. This will take care of the humidity problems for you. The misting system is all set up and we have the tubes just kind of hidden up here. It's a neat feature of the tree frog terrarium. They have these little hooks that hold the tubing uh, like out of sight and you can either have one or two misting heads and we uh, set up two and they're in the front pointing towards the back so they should miss the entire thing and this will replace your need to have to hand miss the entire enclosure twice a day. For example, for this misting system, you can program it to go say twice a day, it'll mist for 16 seconds each. So that's that's how easy it is to set. Oh, and there it goes. So now it's misting and it'll mist for 16 seconds. Hooray! Yeah, it's kind of neat. Then you don't have to hand mist them and uh, it's a little bit less uh, work you have to do. I think that twice a day would be a good frequency and duration for tree frogs. Yeah. Next, before I close up the entire enclosure, I'm going to add one more thing, the combo meter. This will keep track of the uh, humidity and the temperature in the enclosure. As far as temperature goes, by the way, we haven't covered that. Temperature is pretty easy with tree frogs, like, especially gray tree frogs. 
dogs. They're very adaptable, they're very hardy, they're used to quite a, a range and fluctuation in temperatures where they live in the United States. They can have anywhere from 65 to 75 degrees. They definitely don't like it hot, which is primarily why they come out at night, but uh, the thermometer will just kind of help keep track of it for you. I don't think it's 100% needed for gray tree frogs because if you just keep them at room temperature, they're going to be happy, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to keep track of it anyway to be safe. And that also does humidity, right? This also keeps track of humidity, so if you want it just to keep track of humidity levels, it would come in handy. The one thing I will say about where to put a thermometer or a hydrometer in with a frog is make sure it's located away from or behind the misting system so it doesn't spray water at it, because that's just going to throw it all off track. Gray tree frogs don't need any special UVB lighting at all. You're really just adding light for the plant's sake and to give the frogs just a day and night light cycle. So you can use something as simple as an LED bulb, like a grow bulb from like a hardware store just to illuminate the enclosure. But if you want something to illuminate the entire thing, you could do something like uh, Exoterra's Terra Sky. This is a pretty strong light, it's an LED light that you can just rest on top of the enclosure. I'm not sure if it would look better to have this on top Top of the plastic part though or on top of the screen so we're gonna turn it on for both and see what looks better Is that plastic or glass oh it's glass okay never mind it's glass <laughs> sorry Ooh. Ooh. That makes the tank look a lot better. Yeah, it actually really brightens it up more than the ones that we use just a little light for. So yeah. either one would work. This does make it look really nice. And this one actually comes with a remote. So you can like turn it purple or blue. Turn the lights off. Yes. Oh, you can see that. That's cool. Purple. There's also things like sunrise and sunset. Good night, frogs. There's also lightning. <laughs> Lightning mode is fun. <laughs> so yep. yeah, there's a lot of different uh, choices you have on here, which is kind of fun. Now that we have the entire habitat set up, let's add living things to it. Well, I guess the plants are live living, but let's add the janitor crew to the substrate. So we're going to add some springtails, and these will do a great job at eating any molds or funguses that grow, along with little bits of fecal matter. And then we're going to add some isopods. But let's start with the springtails. I'm just going to open this above the substrate. How about there you go. That's Maybe. probably good. Yeah, just that much. Yeah, yeah, that's probably more than they need. That's probably a good amount. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll tuck a little bit more back here. We'll have like two populations and they can have a war. Or they'll peacefully coexist, yeah. who knows. When it comes to isopods, you have many choices. There are tons of different isopod species available at reptile stores nowadays. However, a lot of them are big enough that gray tree frogs might see them as food. They might not see them. Like if you were to add like powder orange isopods, those would do really well in here. They're about half an inch long max size. Or powder but, blues, they might blend in a little bit better. Powder blues would work too. Um, they should spend a lot of time underneath the leaf litter, but if they come above the leaf litter or start climbing on the cork bark, the frogs are probably going to eat them. So if you don't want to risk that happening, you can add dwarf white isopods. These are really tiny and they're so small that the frogs won't even see them, but they'll still do a great job cleaning up poop basically that your frog leaves behind. The dwarf whites will also burrow more into the substrate so they're going to be less likely to be seen in the first place. We'll kind of scatter these around too. I'm going to okay. do three populations of them and they'll have like a world war. I'm still going to say they're going to Coexist. live peacefully. All right we've got springtails, we've got isopods, and now let's add the frogs. Can you wake up? Wake up. Oh geez hello. Oh, don't you... wake me up. Oh Oop. no we're not going out there we're going in there you go. Oh. Hopped right in. I think you're gonna like it. Well, for the time we have you in here anyway. These live in our zoo, but that's okay. They look awesome in here for the time being. Check it out. Here, you can sit on a leaf. Well, I was worried that the uh, front half of this enclosure was a little bit open, so I'm gonna add a frog ledge to this habitat. It's actually a soap holder with suction cups that's supposed to go in your shower. It's perfect for frogs! So we actually sell these in our store and we sell them as frog ledges. So it's just too perfect not to include in here. I think it looks adorable, but the frogs are gonna love it because they're gonna sit right in there and jump off and they're gonna better utilize that space, so yeah! Frog ledge! So there you have it, a completely bioactive gray tree frog habitat. Should we jump into a sweet montage of amazing camera footage? I think we probably should.
that pretty much covers everything you need to know as far as their habitat goes, so now let's talk about diet and feeding your gray tree frog. In the wild, gray tree frogs will eat a huge variety of insects and other invertebrates. I primarily see them eating a lot of moths in my own experience, and that's because the lights outside of our deck will attract moths and therefore they attract tree frogs which eat the moths. Uh, moths aren't really a readily available feeder though in reptile stores, so instead just try to offer them a variety of different feeders. You can give them mealworms and dubia roaches, you can do crickets. The only problem with certain feeders is that, for example, dubia roaches and mealworms, if you just let them loose in the enclosure, they burrow under the substrate and then the frogs don't see them and therefore they can't really eat them. So if you want to feed a burrowing species of insect, maybe put them in a ceramic dish so that they can't get out and then they're also going to be more visible for the frog and therefore they'll be more likely to eat them too. We feed our frogs primarily crickets and that's because the crickets don't dig but rather they sit and crawl on top of the leaf litter, they crawl on the cork bark, they go everywhere so the frogs are more likely to see them. Great tree frogs are also not opposed to eating from tweezers. Yeah, you can tong feed them too if you want. If you will like want to give them a variety but you don't want the bug to dig down in the substrate, just use tongs, touch their lips a little bit and they'll probably take it from your hands. I would recommend dusting their feeders though twice a week. You can alternate between a calcium powder and a multivitamin. Exoterra makes these too. They actually did not provide these for this video but I want to give them another shout out and because they do have some really good supplements that you can use for the feeder insects for your frogs. Again I would just kind of alternate maybe one feeding give them the calcium and the other feeding give them the multivitamin and just switch back and forth because you're probably going to be feeding them about twice a week anyway. Babies as they're growing and they need to take in a lot of nutrients to grow they can probably be fed every other day but as adults eh, twice a week is probably pretty good whatever they're willing to eat in a single sitting or I guess in around mm, 20 minutes until they get full. When it comes to their calcium powder I would recommend a calcium that has D3 because since they're nocturnal they're likely not going to metabolize the vitamin D from the sun but instead they're going to absorb it from their diet. So to prevent them from having a lack of vitamin D in their diet from not having just the perfect variety of insect feeders like they would have in the wild you can supplement or coat their feeder insects with calcium that also has D3 in it. And finally the last thing we'd like to cover in today's video is handling gray tree frogs. Being an amphibian they are actually really sensitive to the oils and other chemicals that our hands might have on them so I would recommend not handling them if at all possible. They're really just a good pet to observe and interact with by feeding or misting or just by looking at them through the glass. They are really entertaining and you don't have to handle them for them to be a fun pet but if you do have to handle them to take them out and like clean the enclosure or just move something or whatever the case may be make sure you don't have any chemicals on your hands like sunscreen or bug repellent or lotions are bad for them and they can actually like sting or burn like give them a chemical burn on their skin so wash your hands really well with just water honestly and then make sure that your hands are actually damp when you are holding them because you might dry them out by holding them too so I would spray down your hands with the chlorinated water first and then you can take your finger and lift it underneath their chin and they usually will step well <laughs> In that case, it didn't work. Yeah. Usually they step right up under your hand. Aw, oh, it's Belinda. She likes being held. You're gonna sit right on my thumb, of course. Great. Uh, so yeah, handling, keep it to a minimum, but you can handle them if needed. So there you have it, how to set up a proper environment for a gray tree frog and how to take care of one. I hope that you learned something new from today's video and uh, I should also mention they can be housed together, like you can keep multiples together as long as the enclosure is big enough. I didn't mention that earlier. Thank you all for watching and I hope you, again, learned something new. I hope this video came in handy and if you're getting a gray tree frog, I hope everything goes well for you. Thanks as always to our Patreon backers for your very very generous support and everyone once again for watching and Exoterra for sponsoring today's video. We'll put links to them in the comments below in case you're interested in any of the products that were shown in today's video. Thanks then, we'll see you next time.